I got it. said first come, first serve. What is that? What is that? He is risen. Hallelujah. Gosh, you guys have been to church before. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Wow. We're going to have breakfast every Sunday here. The energy is overwhelming. Well, welcome to Union Congregational Church. We are so glad that you are with us on this uh, Easter Sunday morning, and we welcome those who are joining us online through YouTube and Facebook. We're very grateful for uh, your presence, either online or here in person, as we celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a beautiful day God has given us as well uh, to enjoy and to worship and to give thanks for this gift. And may that the message of this day uh, abide in your hearts always. So this morning, I uh, want to thank all of those who have provided these wonderful uh, flowers. And they are listed on the insert of the bulletin. And I just want to make sure, uh, you know, from time to time, things happen to the flowers. So we had offered you, I think it was, the pink, blue, and white hydrangeas. And um, the white ones didn't do so well. So those of you who ordered uh, the, the white ones, you can uh, come up and pick the, either the pink or the blue. Um, that's OK. Um, and I, we apologize for, um, I don't know what we're apologizing for. We didn't do it, but you know. <laughs> That's, that's how it is. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoy it, uh, no matter what. So this morning, I also want to lift up and thank uh, the wonderful people who pr provided so much for us this week uh, with the Thursday uh, meal that we had um, and all of the wonderful food that we had, as well as I um, want to thank Louise, um, Tallman, uh, Reverend Louise Tallman, and Tita for Good Friday uh, and the beautiful service you provided us. Uh, and also our breakfast this morning uh, w was just um, very delicious and very, very much appreciated. So thank you, uh, Linda Butler, and everybody who helped her. And, and that would be uh, too many to name at this time. So we just uh, want to lift thanks to you uh, for that. The announcements for this coming week are as they're printed in your bulletin. I do need to lift up that there is no Bible study either in person or on Zoom uh, for the next two weeks. We will resume uh, on um, the 18th of, I'm sorry, the 16th and the 18th of April. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, we welcome you and we'd like to connect with you. So if you would uh, fill out the insert of the bulletin and hang on to that until after the worship service. We have a welcomer uh, in our lobby area. In exchange for that insert, we will give you a gift, thanking you for being with us on this Easter Sunday morning. We appreciate your presence here. We invite you uh, to come and worship with us, with us again very soon. So there's a lot. This is a very full service. So let us prepare to worship our wondrous God as our bell calls us to worship. Let us continue as we meditate upon our prelude.
day. Inside, outside, all around us. Happy Easter. I invite you to hear these words as we are invited to confession. We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. Let us trust in God's love for us as we confess the ways we have not lived and shared that love expressed to us in Jesus' suffering on the cross. <clears throat> Let us now confess our sins as you listen and take in these words that I read. We cannot truly worship you, loving God, until we recognize how unloving we have been. We cannot truly live until we admit the many ways we have been dwelling in death. We cannot know forgiveness until we honestly face the wrong we have done and the good we have left undone. We admit before you now the anger and spite we have carried in our hearts the doubts, the fears we have allowed to paralyze us, the misplaced priorities that have led us away from your will and way. Help us break down the barriers we have erected so we can experience new life today. In Jesus' name, and we all say together, amen. amen. Let us now hear these words of assurance of God's grace. God demonstrates God's love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that God sent God's Son into the world that we might have life through him. There is no condemnation for those who receive God's love. Amen. And now let us stand for those people who find it comfortable, and let us really belt out this next hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today.
Thank you. I invite you to be seated. I got goosebumps. <laughs> when we have seen the Christ that makes all the difference in our view of life, when we have encountered life, we can no longer pursue the ways of death. When we realize how much we have received from a loving God, our gratitude pours forth in eagerness to share good news with the world. We welcome all our first time guests this morning. We do not want you to feel any obligation to place anything in our offering. We are glad and grateful that you are joining us in worship this morning. We will now receive our offering. Jesus shall reign as is printed in the worship guide. Consecrate all we have brought to share, that the message of today may spread through the streets, across the lands, beginning within these walls and bursting out for all the world to hear and to observe. May the glad songs motivate practical ministries. As forgiven and forgiving people, we take new life into the marketplace, into our jobs, schools, into our social life and leisure hours. 
May all we offer express true thankfulness. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Union Congregational Church, we celebrate open communion, which means that anyone desiring a closer relationship with Jesus Christ is invited to join us in, as we share these gifts of God's grace. If you are a first time guest, we want you to feel comfortable either in sharing the gifts of God's grace or just passing them along to your neighbor next to you. We are glad that you are here. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Yes, it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. 
deliver us, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. And he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the mystery and ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us, us our sins, as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Through this broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing which we pour, we participate in the new life which Christ brings. Come for all things are now ready.
take and eat. This is the body of life. The life of Christ shed for you. Take and drink in remembrance of him. And now may this, the life of Christ, keep and preserve you to life everlasting, that it may be according to your faith, so that God's love, grace, peace, and spirit may abide with you this day and always. Amen.
What a morning. Now a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. For those who like to follow along, it's found on page 1588 of your Pew Bibles. Let's listen for the word of God for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning we are, as a family, very blessed. Our son Peter and his wonderful wife, Jamie, and our two grandsons uh, who are sitting back with Judy, <laughs> hopefully uh, not messing up the live stream <laughs> and putting a bunch of emojis on it um, going out, uh, Nolan and Simon. Uh, are with us, and uh, they have to travel a distance um, to join us, so we're very appreciative of them being here today. It reminded me that uh, early in my ministry, when Peter was about six or seven years old, he would sit as he is sitting today in the very front pew, and during my pastoral prayer, he wore uh, tennis shoes that had Velcro straps on them, right? And through my pastoral prayer, he would open and close them, open and close them, open and close them all the way. So he and Jamie have created two sons who are just like him. <laughs> and you know, that's every parent's dream. <laughs> You mutter to yourself from time to time, I hope that when you grow up, you have children just like you. So, it's interesting, isn't it, as we come to this um, high holy day and we celebrate this new life that has burst. I like to think that that, in, that tomb was covered and it was still dark. And from the inside of the tomb, you could detect, maybe those soldiers detected a quiet, small sound. And as it got louder, they identified it as a laugh. And the laugh got louder and they looked at each other and wondered how can a crucified dead person laugh? And it got louder and it got louder. And we are told that the stone that was very heavy and that the women were so concerned about rolled back, but I wonder if maybe it didn't shatter under the laughter as it got louder and louder because God's love and light will not be confined 
by the tombs human beings try to place it. It will burst forth because it is love. It is love that motivated God to create all of this stuff and to create you and me in his image and likeness. And that, we are told by Paul, nothing can separate us from that love. Parents and grandparents know that, right? Nothing. Your children can do all kinds of things to maybe upset you, disappoint you, but nothing that will ever stop you from loving them. And that is how God's love is for us. And I love this story. Uh, Mark, you know, was the earliest gospel written of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew and Luke kind of copied their stories off of Mark and another source that's known as Q. But Mark's the first. And so when we come to the ending of this gospel, you'll notice in chapter 16, and if you want to during the sermon, you know, if you kind of get uh, bored with what I'm talking about, open up your Bibles to that 16th chapter, and you'll notice that verses 1 through 8 were the original ending. Verses 9 through, um, I, I forget what the last verse is, but through the end was added later. 1 through 8 is where Mark ended. And so in this story, it's, it's interesting, but I think it's extremely hopeful, is that when the women come to the tomb, the stone is rolled back, and they engage in a conversation with the young man. That's all we're told. You know, others called this person an angel. Um, we don't know what that experience was. But it appeared to them as a young man. And the young man says, why, what, what are, you, why are you doing here? He is not here. Which has all kinds of implications. He is not here. He's not in the same place you are. You're going to have to do some work to get where he is. You're going to have to change your thinking. Remember that the story began in chapter 1 where Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. In other words, metanoia, the Greek word. Change your mind. Change your mind to get where I'm at, because that's reality. Change your mind. So they're going to have to change their minds about a lot of things in order to get where he is. And then in that story, we notice that the risen Christ doesn't appear, doesn't have a conversation with either one of them. They just run away afraid. Right? And so what we are left with that the other gospel writers kind of fill in is that there's this risen Lord experience, but Mark doesn't give us that. What Mark says to us is the tomb is empty. Now what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, we've done over and throughout the Sundays of Lent since the beginning, we've talked about the Lord's Prayer. And we've talked about how in that prayer we have prayed that to this God who is the creator. Jesus called this God Father. But, but the, the, the broadness and the expanse is that God cannot be reduced down to a gender that God is larger and bigger, and God is the creator of all of us, all the world. So when we pray that prayer, we're praying to a God who created everything. Right? Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And so we come to the empty tomb, and you and I have a decision to make. Will it be God's will that is done, that it is affirmed in that empty tomb? Or do we go back to Palm Sunday where 
Pontius Pilate, representing the, the empire of Rome, marches in with all of the regalia of Rome, all of the weapons, all of the might, all of the force, and all of the oppression. Which will we decide? I love, uh, in my ministry, oftentimes I will have members come up to me, usually in leadership, and say, Pastor, you don't live in the real world. That's, that was no news to my wife. <laughs> you, you, you know, you just don't w live in the real world. You're an idealist. You preach these things and invite people to live into them, but it's not how things work in the world. You see, we go back to Pontius Pilate. That's how things work. And then we come to Jesus, who is pure love, who stretches his arms out on the cross to embrace all of humanity and expresses God's love to everyone and forgives them all, those who caused his pain, suffering, and death. And when you look at the two on Good Friday, it looks like Pontius Pilate wins, right? Jesus is taken from the cross, buried in the tomb, and that that, two, that stone is shut, it will not open. That's the way of the world. Until that little small laugh begins on early Easter morn. And then we discover that no, Pontius Pilate doesn't win. No, the world doesn't have its way or say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and the tomb opens, and the radiance of God's light and love and joy bursts forth for all humanity that death cannot separate us from God, cannot separate us from love. We will never be separated from love. But thy kingdom come, thy will be done. How's that going to happen? Just as those two women... And I loved in this story. They ran away. And, and, but what did the spirit or what did the, the, the young man say to them? Go and tell them. Go and tell. Go and tell. Go and tell. And they run away and they don't tell anybody. You know why? Because it's such an incredible story. That's not how the real world works, is it? We really are in, afraid to embody love in our lives because we're afraid to look like suckers and wimps and weakness. We're afraid to show the compassion and kindness of Christ in our lives because we'll be taken advantage of. So we, like them, sometimes run away and we don't say anything to anybody because we don't want to stand out. But if we're praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Jesus met this this. Prayer. The Lord's Prayer was not a prayer about getting you and I in heaven. It was a prayer about how to get heaven into earth, which Jesus initiated. But like that empty tomb, you and I are supposed to pick up and carry on in our lives. That's called resurrection life. But I'm afraid that when we look at the world today, we act as if Jesus is still in the tomb. He's not raised from the dead, and the world has won. We act as if the way we're going to treat each other is we're going to step on each other. We're going to be callous to the needs of each other, because what it's really all about, I'm told, pastor, in the real world, people compete against people. We don't help each other. You only help somebody if it's going to help you. You need to get ahead. You need to win. But there's this dream of God that comes to us in Easter. And that is somehow when we become vulnerable to the love of God for us, we become vulnerable to express that love to others. The kingdom shows up. 
the light of God's love is revealed. And when we do that, we make the world a better place. Living the resurrection. So the choice is always ours, is it not? From time to time. Is the tomb empty? Or is the body still there? We decide. Amen. Let us stand and join together in singing our closing hymn. One more time. Blessing of God, fountain of living water, flow with us as a river of life. May we drink deep of her wisdom. May we never thirst again. May we go through life refreshing many as a sign of healing for all through the one who is life eternal. Amen. 
and let us be seated and meditate on what we have heard today as we listen to our postlude. the ending of the story is that just as I am and Judy are happy that um, Peter and Jamie have children that are just like them, <laughs> we know that they have children that are just like them in their compassion, kindness, caring for others. And so that's the story for us. God 
has created us as God's children. And sometimes we grow in to who God created us to be and reflect his love, reflect God's kindness and compassion and life for one another. May we do that as resurrection people. Amen. Amen.